Hosea Ballou wrote his treatise on atonement in 1805, and it's still considered a major statement of universalist theology of the new world. His basic point is simple. If God is a God of love, and if God is a limitless being, then God's love must be without limitations. Logically, then, there can be no such thing as eternal damnation, for a God of unlimited love would never damn human beings to eternal suffering. Ballou went further than this. He argued that God's love was so limitless that upon death, everyone goes straight to heaven. Wait just a minute, you may well say. Even if you don't believe in God or heaven, the internal logic of Ballou's universalism may strike you as, well, problematic. Everyone gets to go straight to heaven? What about Hitler? What about slave owners? Thus, the Reverend Dr. Mark Morrison Reed, a Unitarian Universalist minister, makes an obvious point when he writes, if God is just and loving, there must be a reason. If there is no reason, one is led to the conclusion that God is neither just nor loving. Jose, Hosea Ballou's ultra-universalism, in which all are saved and brought into God's embrace upon death, is silent on this. In fact, it trivializes black suffering. What is the meaning of enslavement if the master and slave are both redeemed? The way black theology answers this question is that God is the God of the oppressed, that God, through Jesus who suffered, identifies with the oppressed and will comfort and lift them up. I don't really have an adequate response to Mark's point. When I worked with Lindsay Bates, longtime minister at the Unitarian Universalist Society of Geneva, Illinois, she and I used to argue about this point in universalist theology. Lindsay took a middle ground between Mark Morrison Reed and me. She was a restorationist. The restorationists said there were some kinds of evil that must be punished after death. There will be punishment for sin after death, but it will be a time-limited punishment. Eventually, though, God will bring us all into harmony with divine love. Lindsay and I never convinced one another. But I always argued for ultra-universalism, and I had a couple of reasons for arguing for Hosea Ballou's death and glory universalism. One of my reasons was selfish and one may be transcendent. So my selfish reason is that I'm pretty sure that under the restorationist model or under the conventional Christian model, I and most everyone I know would have to go to hell. We'd have to go through a term of corrective purifying punishment. First of all, if you've ever been in any socioeconomic class, from the working class on up in the United States, you have benefited from globalized consumer capitalism that oppresses and exploits workers overseas and here, and you have also benefited from resource extraction around the world that is killing people both here in the U.S. and around the world. It's also killing other living beings. So here in the United States, given our collective sins against the environment, any conventional reading of sin and salvation would send us all straight to hell. We could draw similar conclusions about other American societal sins. Men who have benefited from patriarchy would go to hell. White people who have benefited from racism and colonialism would go to hell. People who live in suburbs like Palo Alto have benefited from redlining, suburban sprawl, habitat destruction, genocide of Native Americans, they'd all go to hell, and so on. Even if you don't believe in the Christian God, even if sin and punishment after death aren't something that you worry about, you have to acknowledge that most of us carry around a heavy load of sin, call it sin or injustice, whatever you want to call it, where sin is defined as transgressions against other humans or against other non-human beings. So my selfish reason for being a universalist is that when I believe that love is the most powerful force in the universe, then I feel there is some hope for me being forgiven. What I get from Hosea Ballou is hope for forgiveness. So then there's my transcendent reason for wanting to affirm Hosea Ballou's universalism. It's quite simple. Ballou shows that God's love is bigger than you or I can know. I want to let that kind of love into my soul 
to make me better than I can be on my own. However, a loose theology also means that we humans are urgently called here and now to address injustice. That injustice in this world is caused by humans, not by God, and therefore it is up to us humans to end injustice. And that any injustice is a sin, and that if we allow injustice to flourish, we are indulging in sin. Baloo throws an overwhelming responsibility on humanity. We humans are the cause of all the sins we hate, and we humans are the ones who must do the work to end sin and injustice. Baloo does not let us pretend that some daddy god is going to come down and solve all our problems for us, not in this life anyway. Nor does Baloo let us pretend that there is some embodied devil who causes evil to us. It is we humans who are the cause of evil, and it is we humans who are called to end evil in this world. So maybe this is not as comforting a theology as it seems to be on the surface. The necessity of addressing injustice can feel like a crushing load. In some ways, it is a more crushing load than the Calvinist hell and damnation that Ballou was trying to save us from. It might be especially crushing when you are the target of sinful injustice, and you are watching oppressors benefit from the evil they are doing to you, and you feel like you have to do the work to correct their injustice and sinfulness. But I think that what Jose, Hosea Ballou's universalism does for me is to relieve me of the necessity to anticipate vengeance. So, for example, some of my liberal friends absolutely hate Donald Trump, and some of them are consumed by thoughts of how vengeance might be wreaked on him. The, this vengeance may be as low level as having him lose the upcoming presidential uh, election, or it must, might, might be much worse than that. So I can feel the attraction of that line of thought, and I've even headed down that path myself. But I find that dwelling on thoughts of vengeance can be kind of consuming, whereas dwelling on the power of love serves to motivate me and keeps me from getting frozen in place. So, problematic though it may be, I still continue to call myself a Hosea Ballou universalist.